Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be talking about the latest Master Mold tournament we played in and rumors of a Disney Plus set. This is episode 382. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six how people, people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some Let's attack him. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use our code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. It shows that you support the show, lets them know they're doing a great job sponsoring us. Uh, it's a little something we want to give back to the community for continuing to make this content, you know, and it's awesome. So also, if this is your first episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks or you're just getting started in the world of Hero Clicks, check the link in the podcast description below. That is our new Clicks on the Block episode, which goes over all the things you need to know when you start off with Hero Clicks, where to travel to go play Hero Clicks, how to find where Hero Clicks events are being held, and et cetera, et cetera. Joining me, like always, is in the studio is... Simeon Bruce, what's going on, Simeon? Wow. Demoted to Simeon Bruce. I am the Dial H for Hero Clicks <laughs> champion. Jeez. All right. I As forgot. I made myself known waltzing forgot. into Krypton Comics belt and toe, <laughs> uh, right. multiple people had no idea what was going on. They said, Look at this foolish man with his belt. But only little did they know if they only knew the truth behind the belt. Uh, they wouldn't think that, would they? Uh, that's true. Uh, my favorite comment on that video uh, was by Ethan. He says, going to SEAL tournament, wears podcast championship belt, doesn't pull gladiator, leaves, does not elaborate. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, sometimes that's what you got to do to let people know. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, every week, we like to start off with the show with what made us happy this week. This may or may not be Heroclix related, so if you guys want to skip it, you can. Uh, no hard feelings, I guess. Uh, but Simeon, what made you happy this past week, my man? What made me happy this last week was uh, on Saturday night, uh, I had some friends over. We had some good food and played some games and stuff, and uh, we just had a pretty decent time. Um, yeah, it was just a simple, fun, interactive human human interaction human interaction yeah you one of those interactive really been, human games really been craving you, some human interaction here lately like oh no my dialogue options where are they how do i speak <laughs> to these people uh, no it wasn't quite that hard but uh sometimes yeah. it, it is sometimes i just look at myself and i'm like say words say words now uh, they expect to up. hear words from you. Oh wait, uh, I should respond. It's, it's like it's like in Snapchat. I, they can see that I've opened the message, and now I have to respond. <laughs> but in real life, oh no, they're just staring so at hard. you, blinking. They're like, oh no, they all right, a minute or two to <laughs> turn <respond>. around. <laughs> oh no, they think uh, I've please. ghosted them. <laughs> <laughs> You're just quiet the whole night, like you still Spe- see them, like oh, just speaking to myself. Them? Yeah. <laughs> oh geez uh that's all right that's funny to me it sounds like a good time hanging out with some friends playing games it's always good um what made me happy this week uh, i'm gonna change it up uh for those who may not know because of how flawless this podcast is going <laughs> uh this is our second time recording this episode so just just so we're all aware uh or maybe we'll edit that out so yeah. they will never know anyways round two it was fireworks um, and uh it was. It was fireworks Something. and like dinner or whatever, which was still a good time. Oh, brulee. I got to see uh, brulee perform. That was the first time. Uh, first, that made me happy this week. And that still did make me happy this week. Um, but I heard back from an audition that I did earlier in the week, and I have officially been cast as a member of a murder mystery group. So that is really cool. I'll be able to. Uh, 
do some murder mystery shenanigans uh, in Sioux Falls here in around November area after we get through some rehearsals and everything uh, done. If you've never done a murder mystery before, I know Simeon's done them. So, like, that's cool. It, sh- it should be fun. It should be fun. I don't know how interactive this is in the might in play out slightly differently though. That Simeon's was, yeah, because he always loses um, and is terrible at them. No, that's just oh. this, the last one you were in. You said you did better than the other ones, uh, but no, it was really cool. Uh, oh, you meant the game ones? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I did please. lose those. Yes. Now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Not my actual murder <laughs> mysteries that I've caused. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, I'm just really stoked to uh, to do some more acting. So I, I haven't been in a play at all this year or anything like that. And uh, except for uh, some top tier videos that are being filmed and edited right now, I haven't done much acting. So if it was good to uh, get out and do some of that, do some improv. Um, you know how hard it is when they say, all right, we're going to do an improv game. It's switching the radio. and You're supposed to basically sing a song for whatever genre they say and like you don't know music anyway like you just don't know it like yeah. all of a sudden you just you have no clue so like they say like boom sing a country song and i was like i like my chicken fry and whatever i sung yeah. the first version and then they're like all right calder here's like, the dubstep station well, take it away <laughs> no they didn't do that no they the one that like stumped me by the way when they switched to christmas i was like mariah carey all i want for christmas is you hark the herald angels sing uh Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. I was killing Christmas. I could have done Christmas all day. But no, they switched it to uh, Disney songs. And I was like, ah. There's the one about, like, being a, a man. Um, yeah, swift as the Corsine there's, River. There's the, there's the Strong letting the great things typhoon. go one. You know, I, I could not think of it. So, like, all, all I ended up doing was was doing the hercules i went hercules and i was like what an idiot I'll get it <laughs> what an idiot i was like i was genuinely like i can't believe i just stood up and just went hercules i'm like ah so so dumb i i don't know disney music i really don't like i i assume they said that it was like quirky and fun and people know disney music well i don't i'm sorry not off the top of my head anyways it was very it was very awkward and painful i can do like everybody bars there. from disney songs if you ask me to sing a full Disney song, I won't be able to do a single one. But I could, for sure, like hit like a chorus or well, a couple lines. I was just really mad because I um like literally two days before or like a week before or whatever, I looked up Gaston's song from Beauty and the Beast, and I like listened to it a couple of times because I played the um villainous Gaston expansion oh, right. yeah. when I was at Gen Con. And I was like, I like that song. It's really good. You know, no one, whatever's like Gaston and something's like Gaston. No one and something is something lad, like Gaston. I ate a dozen eggs a day. A bunch of eggs, like yeah. yeah. I don't remember how yeah. many eggs he's up to, but it's impressive. He's a whole lot of eggs. Yeah, yeah, now he's roughly the size of a barge. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyways, uh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That took way too long. Let's just go ahead and jump into the news. All right, so like we said, we played in a Omaha uh, sealed tournament for Master of the Molds. Simeon, you're a, you're a local Omahaite, Omahanian, <laughs> um, whatever you're called. Uh, why don't you give us the breakdown on this Here, tournament, my dude? Omaha 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 Maniacs. Yeah, that's what Omaniacs. I, I have no idea. Omaha Maniacs. Uh, I'm pretty sure Omaha Maniac is running wild, brother. <laughs> running running wild because uh it's a lot whole lot of empty land that we have to run across. Um Yes. Yes. I interrupted you and I have no idea what you were segueing to. I I was just tell me about the tournament, my guy. Oh, tell me okay. about that, well, that tournament, huh? So the tournament that was held was a it was a sealed, um, three hundred point sealed tournament. Um, we had prizing from previous like states and other random stuff. I don't know exactly what all was going on, but we just kind of threw like everything. Like the whole kitchen sink was a prize as well. Um, so yeah, we had uh, some rebirth chases. We had some Earth X chases. We had some convention exclusives as prizing we had all kinds of like random 
surprising out on the tables and ready to go. I think they were just ready to be kind of done with all this old Heroclix stuff. Uh, the shop, that is. Um, yeah. And so since they had sat on it for like a year, it was like time to like get it moving. And so, yeah, it was a 300-point uh, sealed. Uh, you could pick, from what I was told, you could mix and match boosters. I don't think anyone did that. But you could pick any uh, modern boosters that were on the shelf um, from what I heard. And so, yeah, we had some people getting Wonder Woman. I don't think anyone grabbed anything older than Wonder Woman. Um, so it was Wonder uh, Woman and X-Men Rise I believe Fall. Uh, Henry had oh, yes. Justice League Unlimited. Justice League Unlimited, yeah. Cause, yeah. Uh, spoiler, I played against him, and he was playing a, a shiny knight. So definitely had to have been from Justice League. Definitely, um, yeah. But yeah, it was uh, three rounds, cut to top eight, and then, yeah, went like a normal tournament from then on out. Um, they allowed for mulligans, so on my first pulls, I pulled a rare tempo and a rare malice, and just kind of a whole lot of other garbagey kind of stuff. Like, Blob was my best figure, which, I mean, Blob Oof. actually is a pretty decent figure in Oof. Sealed, but... Yeah. yeah, it's real bad but when that's your being best. Your best yeah. Um, so yeah, it was. I I decided to mulligan for whatever reason. I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do this. And uh, yeah, I sh- I kind of wish I had just played the team that I pulled originally. But uh, on my second pulls, I managed to put together Destiny, the rare Destiny, the super rare Emperor Vulcan, uh, the rare Carmela Unusion. Um, she, of course, is the one with the giant reach. She's got, like, the green goo on half of her body. Energy shield deflection impervious takes a max of one damage from attacks that do not deal pen damage. And boy, let me tell you, there's a ton of pen damage in this set, so that power was almost useless. Um, Corsair, Banshee, and Brood to fill out my team. I liked this team because I had three flyers and three non-flyers, so I could carry everyone up. I had two figures with stealth, so when there was hindering, I could drop them in hindering and kind of body block. Um, I had Pen Sai with eight range with Emperor Vulcan. He was my main attacker, of course. Banshee is a Pen Sai 10 for three with a rally die that lets me <laughs> use a five when I make a pen penetrating psychic blast attack. Um, also, Banshee in one game got knocked to click four, which is an 11 Ooh. for four damage on click four. Pretty solid. Um, and then Carmella was actually probably like my standout figure just because of how much close attacking I ended up having to do. Uh, but yeah, she also has Penetrating Psychic Blast. So I, yeah, a whole lot of Pen Psy. And then uh, there's Corsair, who pretty much died first every single game I played. But, uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, do you want me to go into my matches real quick? Yeah, man, go for it. Just All three, right. Bro. So my first match was against some weird guy from Kansas named James. Um, no, James drove four and a half hours. He's a patron. He's a listener of the show. It was really cool to meet him. I didn't say that in what made us happy, but that also made me happy to see him and hang out with him for a while. Yeah, that was that was cool. That was really cool. Um, but he pulled from Wonder Woman, so he was rocking the super rare Green Lantern, uh, the, the rare Zeus, who has a 12 psychic blast for 5 damage with prob, and then the Maxi Zeus, who generates a Minotaur, and then he also pulled a Minotaur. So in our match, I did not check his cards, and I was just assumed that he couldn't see through stealth, and so I dropped Destiny. I dropped everyone like in a line on the map that we were on, and I dropped Destiny in some hindering, and I was like, yes. Uh, even though... So my entire plan with that was that he wouldn't be able to shoot and wouldn't like he'd have to base people. But even at close, Destiny is not like a good defense. So I don't know why I put her all the way up in the front. That was just a bad idea, totally. So like he needed a yeah. four to shoot Destiny with Zeus because Zeus can see through hindering. So that happened. I probed it. It happened again. I rolled super senses and failed. Destiny dies to five damage. So that was a bad start to my game against James. 
Um, well, you see, you can tell that a lot of figures in our team are really bad because they die to a five damage penetrating psychic blast. I mean, if they just I died mean, to a twelve for five, they probably shouldn't have been on your team in the first place. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I would never suggest that. Uh, try and seal to always have with these benched sets. The important things are try and get yeah. some shape change, try and get some invincible, so you can reduce that pen damage uh, because that's the and real the real kicker in these. You really, really should have thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a tough battle so from that point it was like all right lock down zeus um he tried to barrier up after that attack and so i was like all right blow up the barrier get carmella in there so she can't be pen side so like she at least gets her impervious roll and then if she misses it she only takes max of one it's like that kind of stuff with carmella and then um just mostly like try and like hold zeus down so that he can't make those psychic blast attacks and right. i managed to take out the rest of the team and then i realized that i had i think i had emperor vulcan and carmella left those were like my last two figures and zeus was still top dial with mystics and that's when i realized like oh there's no winning this game like i'm just done like i he's already outscored me um, there's no use in like ever running. I never had more points on the table than he did. So uh, yeah, it was just, it was over from that point, but yeah, he ended up wiping me. My second game was against what I consider probably one of the best pulls that you can get in X-Men Rise and Fall. There's definitely better pulls like Emperor Gladiator would be a really solid pull compared to this, but this was the Blackheart, uh, Exodus, um, Ooh, it was Blackheart, Exodus, that's, and that's Colossus at 50. And then, of course, sidelined uh, Hellfire Club Guard. So Blackheart, oh, that's the other thing. James managed to pull in two Minotaurs, and one of them rolled like a five on Blades against Brood or something that didn't, didn't matter what it was. It was just like adding insult to injury, and I was just like, very cool. I'm glad you're off the map figure can kill my only on the map figures um but yeah so this the second match was got him blackheart i'm guessing at full yeah it had to be at full um which not a really long dial for 150 points it seems like it would be but again there's so much penetrating damage in this set that one blast from emperor vulcan knocks Blackheart to toughness energy explosion with an 11 for 3. Well, your opponent really should have thought about that. If they can't take an 11 for 4 <laughs> penetrating damage, you should just play the figure. Well, Sorry, he definitely I'll, did take I'll it. I'll try to stop he definitely did that. take it because... Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I take Mystic's damage. Uh, I managed to kill the Colossus twice. Uh, so the first time, Ooh, I kind of forgot that Exodus and revival, huh? had the Krakoan revival. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Um, although it helped me because I was able to make like a Phobos armor and I was kind of low on opportunities to make attacks and stuff. Uh, also I needed that outwit to get rid of Exodus's, uh, control? ESD. Oh, no, ESD. That, that ESD. So he was sitting in hindering with that 17 ESD and he can heal. And I really wanted to get him off of that. So, um, because Blackheart can also heal. And I was like, I really do Whoa. not want the two of them to be healing back and forth kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I outwitted the energy shield. I managed to take out Exodus, managed to take out um, Colossus twice. I killed a few Hellfire Club guards. And then it came down to Blackheart, not yet on any stop clicks, and a Hellfire Club guard. And once again, I was down to just my emperor vulcan who was on his last click his steel energy exploit and my carmela mm. unusian um was like my last two figures and i don't remember what click she was on but she was not doing great um and carmela's still not bad though i mean she's no, no. With morgan but carmela's fine so it was again at this point <laughs> where i realized um there was no way i was winning this because i was going to take mystic's damage to uh -huh. death and so i tried to hit his hellfire club guard with uh emperor vulcan to steal the energy and ko that hellfire club guard and instead i i needed like a five and i just completely whiffed the attack so that's how that game ended and then uh 
my third and final match, my one win for the evening, was against Henry, who was running a common <sighs> Superman, I believe common Vixen, common uh, Green Lantern, and then the uncommon Shining Knight. And uh, this was a fun match. Henry tried his best to uh, help me through the match, help me beat him. And his dice did me a really solid favor and just ruined all of his attack rolls. But uh, he was he was a trooper. He uh, made it through the, most of the match. And then, uh, yeah, he just kept reminding me to, like, I had prob and I had, like, these powers that I could use against him. And then, yeah, so it You're ended like, up winning that one pretty handily. Uh, um, he got, like, 50 points from me. He KO'd Destiny and on. Brood. You want to know, this points. might make you happy, Calder. Destiny oh, yeah. KO'd his Superman with her yes! one damage. Her 10 yes! attack for one damage. I love it. I love it. How's that How's that willpower on your last click feel now, you super <laughs> dork? That's awesome. I love it, dude. But yeah, so I I did not make top eight, surprisingly, with the, the, that Swiss pairings. Um, I did have quite a few points, but none of the one one through twos or uh, one win, two losses, I guess. None of those went on to top eight. Surprisingly, yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't. And there's um, only, uh, yeah, three, <laughs> so I, three rounds. I hopped into a battle royal. I pulled uh, the Super Air Apocalypse. And, man, people aren't lying. When you play this set in battle royals, and I hope they keep this in mind for any future sets with rally dies, there are some things where just having an infinite supply of rally dies is real gross. So <laughs> I was playing like I, I got like halfway through the match and uh, it came down to just me and one other guy. And he had the Colossus with probably like five or six or more rally dies on his card. So auto succeed impervious and I've got my apocalypse who's been stealing energy, healing himself and, um, I had a Shi'ar Guard, and I had uh, Arc Light. And so I had three attackers, only one or two, depending on where I was at on my dial, could actually deal Colossus damage. But every time I did, every time I would have, I also rolled a five. So he just kept Ooh. removing Rally Dies and then adding them. And it was like a perpetual thing. And eventually that Colossus took out my whole team because I just could not actually deal any damage and it's protected out wit so uh yeah it it's, was, only, it was a real, it's only only damage match. yeah but uh that was it's a fun set for battle royals it's just hilarious at one point uh so like my emperor or not emperor uh my apocalypse has a rally trait but his is based on characters that share keywords with him and i pulled no characters that shared keywords with him. So oh, I no. at no point gave him a rally die. However, Arclight can use her rally die to uh, swap out a die in a quake attack that she makes with a five. And so she had probably eight or nine rally dies at one point, just like a ridiculous amount. Never actually needed them, but they were there. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Arclight really has the uh, the monopoly on rally die for your team. So helpful. Just, just as good as Colossus's rally. <laughs> it would have been really, really infinitely just more interesting had I had like Destiny or somebody with like an interesting rally die. Oh, probably even long shot. Like even like crit hitting a just a ton of times or something. Well, that'd been fun. I mean, long, long shots rally is really fun though. So what I pulled and how I did in this tournament, um, it was a little strange. Uh, I, I'm still I'm not in love with Rise and Fall. I did pull two super rares. So I pulled Rookshire, Corvus, whatever, what's his face, and then I pulled Emperor Vulcan. My team ended up being uh, Destiny, Emperor Vulcan, Corsair, uh, Dakin, apparently, and Polaris. So I was like, I got, you know, I got one good range attacker with Vulcan. I got one solid close combat attacker with Dakin, apparently. Uh, and then I have a, a really meh attacker with Corsair, but he's got some sidestep outwit. Polaris is a good, you know, TK. She is also a 10 for three, just like Corsair is. So I'm like, hey, no, not bad. 
you know, nothing, nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. And uh, then Destiny is like obviously just a prop, you know, so stuff you needed. Come out 295 points, you know me, I'm always sharking that five points and sealed so my opponent can't get nothing. <laughs> uh, first round, played against Ian, it was actually a pretty, uh, it was a pretty fun game. Uh, he was playing Krakoan Revival and he brought... Uh, Emma Frost back to life I think twice in the same turn because I outwitted her super senses with Corsair charged up with Dakin apparently uh, and then KO'd her because she doesn't get super senses doesn't get stop right and then he's like okay I'm gonna bring her back to life and I'm like oh that means I get a pog so I'm gonna bring in a skinless man <laughs> and then I flurry blades with skinless man killed her again you know to be fair my blades rolls could have been bad and I could have only dealt one damage so you know that's yeah. Understandable. He's kind of. You know, I mean, she doesn't have great defense values on that click. No. Um, not really. So, yeah, it was kind of like a chance, but, I mean, depending on the rest of the team, that could have been, like, the only figure worth keeping yeah. on the map, I guess. I don't know. Um, I mean, he had a full power. Uh, Sebastian Shaw. S- Sebastian just having stealth is just so bad for him, though. It's really rough. And then, he, I guess Omega Red was already dead at that time i was honestly surprised he didn't bring omega red back to life he doesn't that was have the, the one x-men keyword oh that's I'm right guessing. never mind no oh, yeah you're right he doesn't have x-men that, that i forgot how Krakoan revival works oh the you're prime right. does, but yeah the yeah no he had the, the normal regular, yeah 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 was, he made the bear cub oh Kotick. tiger it's a tiger Kotick. wow tiger yeah i i said tiger okay i fixed it <laughs> he fixed it anyways so like that game was fun um, he gave me like 350 something points by the time ca- time was called. I really wanted to get the mercy rule and cap him out at 400, you know. Um, but it was still funny. Uh, next game, uh, kind of went against just a whole bunch of different just X Men stuff, kind of a hodgepodge uh, X Men team. We just kind of went in the middle of the map and we just pff, smashed each other, just rolled attacks. And I, you know, I like games like that where it's like brain brain turned off roll dice you know that's just fun uh and then last one was against this team with uh diamond patch is tough man tough to take out in a sealed setting uh reducing penetrating damage uh super senses invulnerability that was really tough i think i i think i could have beat this team if i would have played it a little bit better i lost corsair right away to some stupid stuff he had like i mean he had diamond patch and then he had saber tooth and he had cyclops and havoc so we had to be able to outwit stuff on diamond really he had four really good attackers and then he had destiny and professor x to help out so he had a problem he had not wit he had four really good attackers and i'm like man i i gotta take some of these people out you know so i took out saber tooth right away but i put corsair in a bad position and he died i'm like uh as soon as that happened, I was like, I don't think I'm going to kill Diamond Patch. So I was like, oh, let's just try to kill everything else and worry about Diamond Patch last. Free Mind Control didn't really come up that often. Didn't really affect much. I think normally he would like miss attacks with my character after he Mind Control him, so it wasn't that bad. Um, but yeah, I wasn't able to win this game. Uh, he, he wiped my team. I think I only killed like 100-something points. It was pretty rough. I, I definitely think if I could have kept a better tempo, no pun intended... Uh, I could have, uh, I could have uh, actually won that game, uh, but I did get to top eight. Uh, top eight played against James, James Tipton. I still have some of that video. Um, I tried to record this match, but I ran out of space on my phone, so it's only like twenty minutes. Got recorded. Uh, it was not, did not go to time, but it was a pretty, it was a pretty close match. Um, I went up and I just one shot Green Lantern right away with Dakin, Dakin apparently. Um, and then I killed uh, Maxi Zeus the next turn after killing a Minotaur already. So I was like, okay. At this point, I had I had two choices. And I could run away from James the whole rest of the game because I have two flyers and stuff. And I could just whatever be like, oh, I've got points. Run away. Go to Elevated. You know, I won map. But it could just be a bro and actually, like, play an actual Hero Clicks game. And that's what I chose to do. And, man, it's tough to hit a 20 when Zeus is parked in that hindering terrain. Um it's like I would miss the first attack, I would prob it, and then I would hit the 20, then he would prob it, and then I would miss. Uh, halfway through, I kind of wised up uh, after Emperor Vulcan got hit down to his charge, exploit, uh, steel energy click, uh, wised up, and I would put uh, Dakin, apparently, and then somebody else next to Zeus, and then I would charge up with him, 
That way Zeus couldn't see me to prod the attack roll, which was nice. Uh, but it ended up being uh, Emperor Vulcan versus Zeus. Zeus was on his very last click. Emperor Vulcan obviously uh, was still on that steel energy exploit click. I needed a seven to put Zeus down right then and there, and I rolled a six. And then I was like, all right, well, next turn, uh, if you somehow you're 12, you don't roll a five, then you win. And like, that's just what happens. So that's just the way games go sometimes, just the way it is. But I'm still, you know, I'm glad I played it out versus like running away the whole time because that's super lame. And then, yeah, and then that was pretty much my yeah. day. And then I, uh, yeah, I don't know it's how, a good time. how effectively you can run. I mean, obviously, like you would have been able to run for quite a while and like kind of not necessarily time it out, but. Zeus has a pretty decent reach when he's at top dial, doesn't he? He's got like a, what, like nine speed, eight range or something? Yeah, because uh, he's got, yeah, the eight range is killer. Zeus. I don't Bruh. remember what exactly he yeah. is, but. Oh, he's got an 11 speed, seven range. So he's okay. got a 13, 13 square reach, old Zeus here. My whole thing was probably going to be like move up into like elevated terrain, basically. Right. And like beyond the edge, just, yeah. Keep, and then keep just going fly back, and, back forth. and forth to elevated since Zeus Force can't him fly. To either do close attacks or like try and tie you up, and right? Make you fail breakaways. Yeah. yeah, like that. That would have been the whole thing. I, I was also super mad. I never once hit him with a Dakin. Apparently, I was like, "Come on, got all those stop clicks." Is like yeah. this is like the prime time to hit him. But I, I never, I never hit him. To be fair, I did hit him on two stop clicks. <laughs> I think every time I did hit him, it was onto a stop click, so it didn't really end up mattering. But I was just like, man, why can't I, why couldn't I hit him with Dakin once? Um, but yeah, anyways, it was still a super fun game. It was great to see, you know, like I love meeting up with Patreon members. I met, you know, met up a few of them in Florida, you know, here and there. They'll pop up at other tournaments when I travel across the country, which is super fun. So I, I just love seeing them. It's, it's great knowing people that, you know, or even people that just listen to the show just because they really like they got a feel for like our sense of humor and they enjoy the show and it just like makes me really happy. Like, ah, oh, you do exist. People do you're not just numbers on the screen. People do actually listen to this podcast. Who to thunk? Uh but yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It's great seeing everybody. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Anyways. You know what else was a good time, Simeon? Oh, do I? Gen Con. Gen Con was a good time. Not trying to rub that in for anybody. I guess, yes, we all know I went to Gen Con. <laughs> but but uh, we haven't done any team building with these uh, con exclusives from Gen Con. And Simi and I just sort of wanted to mess around, build some fun teams, and uh, just see what we could see what we could come up with, you know? Just because it's fun, you know? Because yeah. uh, I, I did the whole, you know, 12 uh, one over jumpers versus 6 Ultimate Warriors. So if you don't want uh, such a basic team like that a, not everybody can pull know. off on secondary market that's a uh that's a pretty expensive team honestly it's pretty expensive yeah that is true yeah had calder not been there that team that I, video might not have been possible uh um, probably wouldn't have been possible it would not have happened <laughs> so when i look at wonder woman and jumpa uh i'll i'll start here because I, I picked the better of the figures, I think. Um, when I look at Wonder Woman and Jumpa, um, the most impressive thing, top dial, is that Charge Flurry Force Blast. Of course, traded in cap as free with a range value of four is really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I mostly look at that. Um, I guess being able to free place and then Charge Flurry would be really cool too, but I'm not paying 75 points for a retaliator so i decided to go and build with the dial length that i think wonder woman and jumpa will most be used at and that's 25 points so for 25 points you've got charge quake an eight speed 10 attack 17 defense with invulnerability and then two damage with leadership which is fine because quake can only do two damage at any point now um, you still get the in cap as free with a range value of four you still get the force blast the weird force blast retaliation if you're within eight. Uh, and then of course the justice society and justice league team abilities. So I decided to build a justice league team based on this dial and what I really think that this dial can bring to a justice league team, which is mostly leadership. So 
I built a 300 point golden age team and 300 points plus leadership that gives us four actions but I thought no 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 that's not enough so I grabbed the power woman from the the whiz kids uh, le power woman the kingdom come one and put her on the 25 point line which at the beginning of your turn gives you a plus one to action total but I thought five actions no 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 that's not enough so we've got a Dr. Fate plus four of his little fates on this team, which will give us a plus two action total. So oh we're rocking plus seven. And at that point value, I think we're only at like 135 points so far. So we've got a lot of room to build with. Um, but so far, this team has uh, it's got to defend it's got quite a bit of enhancement because Power Woman has enhancement. I don't know if you know Calder, but every single one of these fates has enhancement. I don't know yeah. if you remember that from when we yeah, uh, I remember did the that. Thursday Throwdown. Nope, nope um, I, I remember it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, to t- sadly, Wonder Woman gets no benefit from that. She's mostly here for leadership and that fun little retail mechanic uh, kind of helps position people. So, But uh, to, to get help from that massive amount of enhancement. Uh, I added the Wonder Woman 80th anniversary Jessica Cruz chase. So for 50 points, she's got running shot with an 11 attack, pen sai, 18 defense with ESD, and then three damage with, yep, you guessed it, more enhancement. So she'll be at a six. Dr. Fates will all be at sixes. Uh, Power Woman can't do any damage, but if she could, she'd be at a six. Um, I don't think there's anywhere in the world that no one is at not at a six on this team if they have range. Uh, but yeah, Jessica, of course, has the Green Lantern's core team ability, so she'll be able to carry everyone except Power Woman. Power Woman is on the KC click, so she is immobile. Um, and then uh, the big thing with the Green Lanterns, all the heralds, I guess, from Wonder Woman 80th, is I can make the spotlight... Or the, uh, what's the other one? The Catcher's Mitt. So the Catcher's Mitt, of course, gives everyone adjacent to it the uh, energy shield deflection. And then the Spotlight is the, like, stealth busty, what does it do? It is, um, also has ESD on the Spotlight with Sidestep. Uh, It is free Improve targeting, hindering. Choose an opposing character within six squares and line of fire. Chosen character modifies range and attack value minus one when making range attacks. Never mind. It does not bust stealth. It just sees nope. through stealth. Uh, and it has a zero attack value, so it does not get to shoot, even though it has six range. Interesting. Um, but yeah. To round out the team, we need another actual attacker. The Doctor Fates can all make attacks after Jessica Cruz carries them up. So she can carry them up to wherever Power Woman is. Anyone next to Power Woman gets to benefit from that 18 defend. So the Doctor Fates are all 20s from range. Uh, Wonder Woman and Jumpa is an 18. Jessica is a 20 from range. Uh, Rounding out the team, the Batman animated series Robin would be a 20 at close Mm. with stealth for 20 points. Uh, 20 defense at close. And then he's got Perplex. He's got the Trouble Alert thing, which doesn't matter because he's main force. But also, if he gets KO'd and you KO a opposing character of 30 points or more, you can bring him back, which is always kind of a fun little mechanic that he has. And then lastly on the team is from World's Finest, none other than World's Finest. So I don't know if you've ever looked at this character too hard, Calder. I can imagine you don't care about it too much. But Probably not. It has the Batman ally and Superman ally team abilities. So again, can see through stealth. Has seven range on this bottom dial, the seventy-five point line. It's only three clicks long, which seems bad, and it kind of is, which is okay, because um, this is not a super competitive team. But seven range, eleven attack, four damage. Now, of course, that's going to be a seven, depending on positioning, because of all the enhancements. Uh, and then, uh, so they've got the. Powers and abilities can't be countered, and their combat values can't be decreased. That's part of their trait. And then their special defense power is combat reflexes and toughness. So they'll be a 20 for close with stealth, which is pretty solid. And then top dial, they have uh, 
charge with an 11 attack and 4 damage with close combat expert, meaning they're a 12 for 5. And then they've also got the duo attack ability, which is just real nice if you uh, work or if you play at a venue that allows you to duo attack. Having an 11 for 7 damage is still pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Uh, and of course, Robin can boost their attack or whatever he wants to do because he's got perplex. But yeah, I think it's a uh, you know seven actions a turn. Uh, I wish Doctor Fates had like some barrier so I could just create seven actions worth of barrier that my opponent would have to struggle through because that's a friendly thing to do. Um, but no, really I think nice uh, you, yeah. I think the defend from Power Woman, depending on where you place her, is the real kicker. Like you have to be. You have to look at Jessica Cruz's speed and kind of measure out like where you want your team to be, how far up you want to get in the map, and that kind of stuff. But I think it's a fun enough team where you can play it more casually, or you could probably, like I said, have World's Finest be an, uh, a 12 attack for 7 damage and use multi-attack to pump out like quite a bit of damage every turn kind of thing. But yeah, uh, Wonder Woman and Jumpa can also uh, retal and then force blast people towards the Dr. Fates, which can then all likely attack because uh, you just have an absolute ton of... Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, all the ju- all the Dr. Fates have Justice League Unlimited, where you can remove an action token oh, from another that's friendly annoying. character. That's and they're, they're, all that's these so characters good. are Justice League and under 100 points, so... That's one other thing that you can do with the uh, the five Doctor Fates, but yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Okay, all right, sure. Um, real quick, I'm gonna do a shout out to a team I originally built, which was just like two Ultimate Warriors at fifty, and then uh, two Eddie Guerreros with uh, Atlantean General for leadership, and then Exo Specs and whatever else you want to do. That's just like a fun little team, little warrior theme team there. Now I'm going to build a stupid team that I still think is fun because I think more people probably, sadly, uh, care about this Ghost Rider dude. Um, once again, bad dial. Really, <laughs> really bad figure. Like, point-wise, really, really bad. If all the special defense powers were stop clicks, then we're talking. Then that's good. Uh, he has improved movement characters, improved targeting, hindering terrain, and old Ghost Rider here. He's got a lot of a lot of keywords to build around. Are we going to build around any of those keywords? Absolutely not. Uh, he has Babysitter from Hell. When a character in four squares is damaged by an attack made not by Ghost Rider, after resolutions, you may roll a d6. Four through six, move Ghost Rider up to four squares. Kind of neat, kind of weird. Uh, I hope that will pull off more than not. His special defense power for his first three clicks and his last click is just ESD impervious. Uh, we are playing him at 150 points, so he's going to be a 12, 12, 19, 4 with 6 range, 2 targets, top dial with flight. Uh, power Cosmic course. And then he has this whole penance trait. When an opposing character attacks a friendly character, after resolutions, give the attacker a penance token. Power, make an attack targeting a single opposing character before making the attack roll. You may remove up to 3 penance tokens from the target, modifying attack and damage value plus 1 for each penance token removed. If the attack hits after resolutions, heal Cosmic or Ghost Rider equal to the number of penance tokens removed. So that's really, that is really, really cool. I really, really like that. So, first of all, this is worldwide. He does not need range, he does not need line of fire. Just whenever an opposing character attacks a friendly character, period. So, there were a few different ways I could have done this. I honestly think if you want to play a monster or mystical theme team and just put a ton, and I mean a ton of figures on this team, just go for it. Uh, Mystical. now it says, pow. that sounds like Wendigo <laughs> very well could do, do those Wendigo. words rhyme. Uh, sadly, <laughs> Mystical and Wendigo. No, I don't think no, so. They I don't, don't think they rhyme no. at all. <laughs> uh, it says power, make an attack targeting a single opposing character. I assume you still have to be able to legally target that character. It doesn't say regardless of range and line of fire. So I assume you have to, you have to still see them, um, which is kind of a bummer because he doesn't have sidestep. Uh, anywhere on his starting lines he gets it randomly later which is like okay anyways it's still a really dope ability I really like it the theme we are doing instead though is uh dudes on bikes so on dc side of things 125 points also a 19 defense with impervious 
Lobo also ignores characters. He can drop off his dog token uh, whenever. Just free, place an attached dog adjacent or attach an adjacent dog. All right? So he can move up his full 10 squares, drop a uh, drop a dog in the 11th square, and the dog can attack the 12th square. So it's pretty cool. Lobo, it's also pretty hard uh, for him to die because on his last click, it's stop, toughness. Lobo takes no damage from attacks unless the attack roll is a 7. Attacks targeting Lobo can't be re-rolled. So that's a little, little thing there. So that's pretty neat for Lobo here. I enjoy him. I think he's a fun character. Uh, next up, we're going to go with old Daredevil from the Earth-X set and his sick motorcycle. All right? Uh, he's going to get attacked and damaged a whole lot uh, because he's not actually going to die until he removes all his six tokens and then gets KO'd. So these guys are kind of a uh, throw him out there. They're going to try to throw attacks his way to try to get rid of him. A little bit of don't die tech going on with this team with the Daredevil and the Lobo. Uh, and then our last figure here is going to be none other than the best person ever that's riding a motorcycle. Simeon, do you know who I'm about to say? Well, I would have to guess um, between the two. It's I know it's probably not Robin, so it's not Robin in the Bat Cycle, so it's got to be oh. Black Widow with the movie bicycle. Oh. Actually, uh, we don't have enough points for Black Widow in the movie bicycle. About 10 <laughs> points uh, too much. So instead... Oh, okay, it's Thanos 15, on the bicycle. 15 points. No, <laughs> definitely not Tha- oh, Thanos okay. on the bike. What? We don't have uh, it is yet. Doop, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's right. We got an easy rider with a tiger. Uh, Doop uh, has a deep dial. He's got eight clicks of life. He's got two stop clicks, so he's going to be taking all sorts of damage, giving people out penance tokens, which is cool. I really thought um, you were going to say the Captain America... Oh, I guess we do. We have one on the sculpt well, with the bike. No, we don't have one on a sculpt with the bike. We, we have, have Captain America's dial. motorcycle itself is like as a vehicle. But no, we don't have a Captain America riding. There's a one with like a dial power that is supposed to be the bike or something. Oh yeah, that that came out in the same year. Okay. Yeah, that was the Age of Ultron Captain America, the only Captain America with hypersonic speed. Nice. Yeah, probably the only one. Yeah, because Nova Steve didn't have it. So yeah. Yup. Pretty cool. But yeah, no, Dupe is great. He'll also pop off a tiger. When the tiger gets punched by an opposing character, guess what? They get a penance token. So, pretty fun. Just a bunch of dudes on motorcycles. Comes out to 395 points. Obviously, you can cut down Ghost Rider, be whatever. Mess around with it however you want. But uh, I think it's fun. Just a fun little mess around team. If you just want to play a bunch of biker dudes, even in a higher point game, I would say, you know, throw on Undertaker. You know, if you wanted some biker taker, like that's not the gear he's wearing, but you know. And Dupe doesn't still. take pushing damage now. Wow. That's also pretty huge. It's, it's pretty still awesome. Takes, uh, unavoidable. Unavoidable. Ram. Like, like nobody's business. Yeah. Right. But worth it because there's there's uh, no pushing damage. So. Absolutely. All right. So uh, those are our teams. Guys, let us know what teams you're going to build with, you know, Cosmic Ghost Rider, Thanos, Wonder Woman Jumpa, Ultimate Warrior, you know, eh, sort of Master Mold, I guess. Like, not really a convention exclusive. He's whatever, but technically, sure. We'll give him convention exclusive status. So, but yeah, if you guys have any fun team build ideas, uh, let us know in the comments section of the YouTube video or write them into the Dial H for Hero Clicks Facebook or Twitter. Simeon. Are you ready for this bombshell about to drop on you? What if I am ready for this bombshell? Then I guess you sure did play a lot of Fallout then, huh? You good at being ready for for bombshells. I want a vision of this bombshell that you're about to drop. Uh, (laughs) What if you weren't? Oh, you already said what if. Well, I'm low-key excited if this is true and <laughs> I, I don't one you don't like i because i don't know how to use falcon and winter soldier <laughs> there's no way to there's no way yeah, to use that hard to sneak into a it's really like difficult like uh oh man the other day someone signed me up for a timeshare i fell con okay wait maybe we can do this a, a veteran sold me a timeshare in alaska so i fell con to the Winter Soldier. Oh, no. Uh. 
that is surprisingly how quick you came up with that. Um, but also, it's very bad. Yeah, I'm real good at improv, so, so it was pretty, uh, pretty natural. Uh, no, you're like, what's with all these Disney Plus puns? Well, my dude, my lady, my guy, um, there is. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna say this is a rumor uh, because it's because this is not this is not proof. You know, as yeah. much as you know, ifs and buts, candies and nuts, Merry Christmas, all that jazz. Um, an email from a dude is okay. So let's just give you the full thing. Set forty-seven. We've known what set for quote unquote set forty-seven is in the solicits, right? We know that it's gonna have sixteen commons, twelve uncommons, ten rares, two prime, two primes, eight chases, seven equipment, right? But it's just dubbed set forty-seven and it appears to be a working title. This week, there was an email from one. One Mr. Jeff. Oh, no, uh, no. To a somebody. screenshot of an email. Oh, that's yeah. right. A screenshot of an email where we cannot even see the email header, who it's yeah. from. Now, listener, to... let me tell you how hard it is to edit photos. Uh, if you've watched any of our Thursday throwdowns, you've seen, um, let's just say if you believe this email at face value, this screenshot of this email, you may actually think that I am Namor and have a throne or uh, have access to a Galactus helmet or uh, actual Wolverine claws, or, you know, many of the other things that I have photoshopped poorly onto myself for the cosplays for Thursday Throwdown. Um, because, yeah, it's it's pretty easy to fake stuff. Uh, not saying that this is not true. I'm just saying we should have what constitutes breaking so, news. It should here's, probably here's come like, from WizKids kind of thing. Exactly. If it's not from the horse's mouth... From the beautiful horse teeth that WizKids has, then it, then it's not like a fact. It's not set in stone. Somebody saying that, oh, trust me, guys, it's a reliable source. And then it's this, like, weird email screenshot that's, like, not really a full email. And it's, like, hard to prove. Like, you can't prove that's, like, real, you know? Like, I could shoot Simi an email right now and label it James from diamond or alliance or whatever and be like yep that's what it is you know um i'm just saying let's just be cautiously optimistic because i want a disney plus set oh yeah absolutely i want a disney plus set are you kidding me there's one whole good disney plus show that i enjoy and what if so like i can't wait for a disney plus set it's gonna be fun but yeah. uh i i'm just saying this Brought is not by the same community that freaked out about uh gi joe and transformer clicks when WizKids right. kids dared get the properties for <laughs> something they clearly did not label as four hero clicks on the box, um, right? Yeah, cautious but optimism is always thinking... the best uh, when it comes to these things. I, you know, I feel like it's probably true. I'm just, I just want to say going forward, let's have better ways of saying like you know, here's like the new set or whatever. Um, on April Fools, we dropped that beautifully handcrafted uh nick fury legacy card and while we did fool a few right. people right it was april fools and that was the point and at no point were we trying to trick anyone for realsies but uh it would be surprisingly easy it looks like if i just pretend to be jeff from alliance headquarters and just type in an email and i'm like yeah it looks like three dc sets in the next six months and then people just collectively lose their minds because apparently that's the like, level of proof true. we need all of it true <laughs> you know yeah I mean, yeah so look it even if it ends up like that it that it is the disney plus set then awesome that's great i'm just saying like just how a random person on hc realms even if they maybe used to be a whiskage judge saying that that is how a ruling should work that's also not an official ruling just like how when people say, hey, for this event, WizKids doesn't have an official ruling, so we're going to put this one out for the event. That's cool. That'll work. But it's not an official ruling. So just like how Facebook comments and HC Realms comments aren't official rulings, uh, this is not a confirmation of a set. What about a WizKids right, article from... about a rule, though? Well, unless they actually put it in the win, it's not a ruling, uh, oh, believe man. it or not. So, yeah. If WizKids said, we're going to make a Disney Plus set, and then they said, psych, it's a DC Unlimited set, or whatever their <laughs> ad service is called, and it's CW. Doom Patrol and Titans, or whatever. Oh, oh you were talking about even worse uh, DC properties. <laughs> I was talking about, like, the semi-good TV shows, like Doom Patrol and oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, 
I don't know. I've only watched Doom Patrol, so it's the only good one that apparently is on there. Um, and even then, it's like pretty good. Uh, anyways, all this talk, we probably talked for five minutes about don't believe everything you see online. I know, shocker. Uh, but now let's just sort of talk about what we want to see from this set. All right, guys. Obviously, if you did not read into all of the buildup, this is leading to a bunch of massive spoilers for all of the Disney Plus shows. So this is your one and only warning. Massive spoilers ahead. Skip to whatever I say next. The one hour, 32 minute, and 57, 53 second mark. Give or take. Go ahead and add like one hour, 33 minutes. That's probably safer. Because that's the time where we'll stop talking about spoilers. But yeah, if you care at all about spoilers for Disney+, Plus, I am giving you a full 30 seconds here. Over 30 seconds here. Uh, bordering 45 seconds here to skip ahead to the underlined time of which spoiler talk will no longer be happening and you can continue on with your day knowing that you did not hear any spoilers from us and now I am done. I am being very gracious with the amount of time now at one minute. That's all. Uh, Honestly, first of all, the equipment is the biggest thing for me, right? That means uh, we're going to get like a temp pad, maybe, maybe a pruning stick uh, from Loki. I really think Captain America's shield should definitely be equipment. And then, like, John Walker has the ability to start with it. And then Captain America Sam Wilson has the ability to start with it. Uh, I think the Super Soldier Serum could also be an equipment. And then John Walker could have a trait where you can play another five points and also start with that. Like, that would be really cool. I think John um, Walker should be an equipment because at one point, He's used Someone's as hit, used, <laughs> used as a weapon. <laughs> it's not really used as a weapon, but he swung like one. He swung around. Yeah, he didn't oh. like. It's not like Bucky hit Sam with Calder, John. Can you imagine? On our second recording, we still forgot to lead in with a spoiler warning for. Luckily, Gosh. we haven't said too much. Uh, I think we're fine. But uh, listeners, huge spoiler warning for all Disney yeah. Plus shows. And yeah. uh, potentially, like, Shang-Chi and just Disney in general, or Marvel, Marvel. Disney in general, all the things, all the things in anymore? general. Huge yeah. spoiler warning, because, yeah, we're going to basically yeah. go through episodes and big spoiler stuff, so. there. Yeah, so when I don't Loki... think it's a spoiler that there's a cap shield, though. I think no, there's not a spoiler, there's cap shield. That. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, so just like, you know, when Sylvie stabs Kang, maybe we'll get, like, Sylvie's weapons or whatever. Or when uh, mm, when yeah. Sam Wilson... I'm trying to think, what are the, like, major spoilers? Are there major spoilers? Are there really in, like, these other shows? Wanda takes off her sweatpants uh, and puts on a nice <laughs> costume. Like, what's what's the spoiler for Wanda? Uh, Agatha was... It was Agatha oh, Agatha, Hall that's right. That is actually quite for, literally... Yeah, Wanda. Uh, you, you had said something like you want her to have, like... A generic civilian dial, like a Mephisto dial, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, are we said? so um, as far as let's, let's do it by show. I was yeah. trying to get off on a Falcon Winter Soldier rant because that's the only good one. But uh, we can start off from WandaVision <laughs> and then go down. So yeah, from uh, WandaVision, yeah. Uh, objects that I think would be cool would be if they were going to do any objects. I think um, doing like a black and white like toy or whatever. Mm-hmm some sort of black and white thing or half black and white half, half painted so it um, like shows that it's like you know from the outside world or a, something uh, like that a pack of gum and then when you hit somebody with the robot keyword you you give the object the pack of gum to them and then they have a negative one combat values and every time they begin a movement this? you choose the first square you know understand. when vision when vision got gum in his system or whatever in like the third yeah. or second episode oh you know yeah what I mean. you know what i mean the I magic show yeah. the magic show one he gets the, gum yeah. in him and he's like oh he starts acting wacky. all wacky and crazy yeah yeah um, i'm a synthesoid but gum's gonna really mess me up i don't think there's a ton of other objects but i would like some sort of uh, mention to so maybe this is just like character wise. Um, if there's an Agatha made, I think it'd be cool if there was a civilian Agatha that switches either via like this um, whatever the the su- Spider-Man thing where they switched. I can't remember what that was called now. 
the secret identity trait. Uh, it'd be really cool if there's an Agatha with a secret Ooh. identity that switched into more powerful That's actually Agatha. Like perfect for everybody in Westview. Uh, like it would, Wanda, yeah. Vision. Okay, maybe just Wanda, Vision, Agatha, actually. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, the, the people that actually have better, more powerful versions. Quicksilver has an anti, uh, what's it called? <laughs> an anti-secret identity? Yeah. He switches into it? Yeah, yeah. That'd oh, man. Um, and when, yeah, when... Uh, Scarlet Witch switches into hers. You have to KO the two children bystanders. Dark. <laughs> okay. Uh, we said we'd get into spoilers, so that is true. Uh, I think Agatha Billy should have Billy some sort of uh, free barrier kind of thing, and then anyone next to one of the barrier markers that she makes um, loses like special powers to oh, symbolize her, her like, like her runes. Yeah, that like you know deny power or deny magic to anyone except her when they're in there or whatever that was pretty much the only cool thing that i really liked from her was like her like knowing old magic stuff because otherwise it's right. just like random like colored blasty stuff and then uh she could have like a vampire dial because she steals magical stuff um oh, that but yeah true. that's that's, that's my big that. want from wandavision so I'm going to keep, like, I'm pretty much in line. I sort of threw out some things I would like to see from WandaVision as well. But uh, most important thing, obviously, we need close-up magic Jimmy Woo. Uh, we need uh, FBI, I think is what he is. FBI agent Jimmy Woo. Yeah. Uh, with, like, probability control, but only to target adjacent characters or something. Just, like, I just want close-up magic Jimmy Woo. That's it. I'm, I'm a simple man. Uh, you can give me drives a clown or ice cream truck Darcy. Uh, make yeah. her like I don't know, like happy she Hogan a bystander. or something. <laughs> yeah, um, a bystander. Yeah, and then she ignores characters' plasticity because she's like an escape artist or whatever, right? Uh, when she's circus Darcy or something, because she was chained oh, up right. when yeah. she gets turned into it, right? Yeah, like that would be funny. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, Quicksilver, a Ralph that turns into Ralph Boner, that would be hilarious. I think uh, generic sword agents, fine be fine with that some generic sword people obviously people are going to want uh monica rambo whatever else but uh, i think generic sword dudes fine you know you throw that in there i'll uh, be yeah, that's pretty much uh those are pretty much my main wants from wandavision oh i guess we also mentioned secret identity is really good you could obviously do shifting focus for wanda and vision like black and white halloween costume final version um and then i, I would assume i think normal vision will probably be a prime well sorry will be the prime of or the non-prime version of like white vision i assume that'll be one of the primes because like an easy repaint right. you know it's like a gladiator is just the black and gray version right. of gladiator you know it's so like something simple like that and I it, assume makes, will be yeah, a prime. it makes sense because you could play both of them on a team you could like pit them against each other yeah yeah um so falcon winter soldier yeah so like Calder already said, uh, the shield, the super soldier serum, those would be great objects. Um, characters, so I don't know. How many chases are there? I think there's assuming... eight. Which is really, okay, so it's a 56 character like figure set, and it's a full set of chases. Eight chases is just yeah. wow, so much. Assuming that the chase theme isn't like some random, not attached to uh, the Disney Plus stuff. And assuming there's not a bunch of like sub theme things, um, I think it'd be cool to get a Sam Wilson chase when like it's at the fun at the finale when he's like oh, in yeah. like, the full like uh, Captain America get up kind of situation thing. Um, oh, and then yeah, I, I said already <laughs> in our previous recording, I really want the banker that denies Sam the loan oh, as like a, a single click uh, figure that's just like mm. standing there. And just anybody adjacent gets like a minus one to damage or something. Oh my god! Utterly worthless. Just like that guy. Just like that character. He's such a stupid character. Like just such a dumb character. Yeah. Like he's ugh. probably what my idiot. least what favorite idiot. person in the. That's MCU, the worst. <laughs> worse than Thanos. All the villains. Yeah. Banker. You know. You know why he's he's a terrible banker, Simeon. Because he, he's not also a butler on that's the weekends. True. That's the that's main. True. That's the main reason. Uh, 
three people got that joke, including Simeon and I. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's who I made that for, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Ian, um, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's your one per episode. What else? Uh, I made it two. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, what else are you thinking about? So we, we got Banker. We got Chase Sam Wilson. I think if they did a really beautiful Sam Wilson sculpt, because, like, the, the, the sculpt we have is the same one since Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I would really like a yeah. beautiful Sam Wilson cap sculpt because the wings are really cool. And and the suit is beautifully comic accurate, you know, like, yeah, I, 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 would I want like it to be it. an action pose without. Um, I, I want it to be like a, a non reciprocal or non uh, repeated action pose. I don't want him to just be standing there with like wings like stretched out or like folded in or whatever. Like that's fine for like a common or uncommon or rare or whatever. But if they make it like a really cool chase, then I want him to actually look really cool. For sure. Well, yeah, um, of course. And then yeah, I I really want the uh, the Dora Milaje, the the Wakanda ladies that beat them up. That was a really fun scene for me. I really enjoyed that, like the Wakanda Secret Service. Not not are... for me. I, I have issues with that scene, <laughs> but okay. Fine. They're stronger than Super fine. Soldier with metal arm. Makes and literally so, flying so, so boy. Bucky once again, Bucky, did he get the Super Soldier serum? I don't understand that in the show. We we keep saying Bucky's a super soldier, and I'm like, but is he though? It's kind he, of a dude with an arm. He has to kind be in the MCU, a, right? Because he keeps arm. like Speed wise, he keeps up with people who are superhuman. Doesn't keep doesn't keep up with Cap. Cap and Cap. The only person that kept up with Cap was Black Panther. That's because he got he magical not? herb. Yeah. Oh, he's like a dude, dude with an arm who just gets ca- cryogenically frozen to like stay young this whole time. Mm. He might. He must have some, maybe apparently, super soldier serum going through his veins. I don't know. But I always like they keep acting like he's a super soldier, and I'm like, he's. I think he's just a dude with an arm, guys. I think he's just like a really good assassin. That's like Bucky. That's what he does. I missed the part where they said, "Yeah, we're gonna inject you with super soldier serum." I saw when they when they messed with his brain and all that, but I must have missed the part where he was in the in the gym locker room shooting up because, like, I did not notice him taking no serum. Um, but yeah, they just threw that around. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, like a Dora Milaje that can like unequip Bucky's arm and then make Bucky's arm equipment like that's make what they come Bucky with arm yeah <laughs> that's one of the equipment is Once the Bucky game. arm light object like while, they, 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 while they're <laughs> holding it whichever character they were adjacent to when they made it can't use uh, any like standard powers right can't use like close combat expert flirt like any like stuff like that or maybe yeah just totally disarm them they just get earthbound neutralized the only power they can use or something because Bucky's just sort of like oh like as soon as they take his arm off he's just like oh <laughs> hey. uh, I guess the he fight's just, like, over Yep, fight's over. <laughs> like, I only got the one arm now. Like that's just can't win a fight like that. Um, yeah, I love it when they when they say uh, you're breaking your jurisdiction, John, and then Wakandans show up and then break their jurisdiction, which they definitely don't have anywhere. But then they they say some quirky little funny line. It's like, oh yeah, they totally have jurisdiction. No, they don't. Get out of here. You can't <laughs> just act like you own the world because you have vibranium. Magic rock don't make you special, girl. Uh or boy, any of them. Anyways, I got issues with them. I got issues with them. I got beef with Dora Milaje. Um, well, I got beef with everybody. I'm on a ranch, so got a lot of beef. In, in... Anyways, beef for everybody. Uh, I would like uh, a Baron Zemo. Yeah. But not a good one. Just one that can sidestep six times in a turn. A little dance. One that's, that's like. It. That's uh, all he does. So one that's like Zodiac. Yeah, um, he makes where, no he's way. Like got the no, no. tokens except just handcuff <laughs> tokens. Oh, uh, you mean Exodia, not Zodiac? Exodia. Oh, wow. Yes. Jeez. Yeah, and it's it's a twelve step plan to try to get him out of prison, so you have to wait forever before he gets out. No, let's do a Baron Zemo. Let's waste yet another object uh, and make it a Turkish delight, shall we? Oh, <laughs> he gets gosh. a bag of Turkish delights. <laughs> and, and give you can one use to like, it? the child, and he's like. Don't tell my American friends like what you told me or whatever. Told me, yeah. And he gets uh, to use outwit. Mastermind. Basically, it basically just gives mastermind. him give give an adjacent person out a uh, Turkish delight, and then this character can use outwit till your next turn. <laughs> just something bad. I don't know. Can you use perplex? What's the transfer of information power in this game? I don't know. It's got to be. But that's perplex. Yeah, perplex is probably uh, yeah. Got to be a perplex thing. 
heard it here first, folks. They're unbenching powers <laughs> just so we can put them in this set uh, for Turkish delights. No, um, that would be funny. I think obviously uh, generic, like Simi said, generic Dormelage, uh, generic Flag Smasher, Super Soldier Flag Smasher, maybe non Super Soldier Flag Smasher. I don't think we need to waste a Flag Smasher on that. Uh, they can have the character assassination that was Carl Morgenthau in the form of Carly Morgenthau if we want to have that terrible character. Um, we could also do character assassination of Sharon Carter and have that terrible character uh, in this show. Perfectly good character, and then made her the oh, power you mean, broker. You mean the power broker, the yeah. best, most yeah, powerful right. person in the MCU. Yeah, era. right. Goodness gracious. Um, and then we definitely need Batrock the Leaper. And if we could have a Batrock's Brigade generic, I don't think they ever even said the words Batrock's Brigade, but just like the mercenaries that he has hired, you could please get them. And just get another Batrock, the Leaper. That'd be that'd be awesome. Uh, and then give him like a grenade launcher top tile, so he just doesn't do leapy things at all, just like how he does in like the end. <laughs> Sam didn't press me though. Taking on Batrock, I was really impressed. It was like because you know, Captain America like actually like well, no, not on the plane on the end episode. Oh, okay. his Cap, yeah. You know, Steve Rogers like an actually like good like hand to hand combatant, and you know, Sam obviously has Air Force training, but most. Most military, I'm not okay. I'm not going to go down this this rabbit hole because someone's going to say I'm wrong about how they train people. But either way, it's not strong hand to hand combat stuff because most combat, from my understanding, is that you just fight to then get your gun. Like that's like that's like kind of like the military's close combat stuff is like fight, get your gun, shoot. You know, you think um, the air force? Doesn't I don't think spend the air force years. Well, here's your thing. Combat. He, so in an airplane so i'm i was a little surprised that sam uh could fight as well as he did against batch rock um i was impressed you know he did he did have a pretty good training montage so it's understandable yeah um, but yeah i think it's like so <clears throat> what really impressed me is uh this is a side tangent about winter soldier uh falcon winter soldier they essentially had to make like a martial arts a new form of martial arts similar to like gun kata but with like sam's wings so he had to be able to do like fluid movements that didn't look like really jagged and like weird he had to be able to do like these like fluid like martial arts kind of style mu- movements with these like big wings and incorporate them into his fighting and they did a really good job of that like you almost don't even think about it because of like how i don't know kind of like natural sam makes it look but like it's an oh, yeah. incredibly impossible thing to ever happen. Like the ways, like those wings, like retract and stuff. They'd be, they'd have to be like hooked up to his brain, and he'd have to be like controlling them with his mind. But uh, it is really cool. It's um, <clears throat> it is pretty wild. You no, know, oh man, you know it would be a great sculpt. Um, if it was like <laughs> Sam Wilson with the big wings spread out, but then he has like Red Wing like flying over his shoulder, just a little little Red Wing flying around. That'd be yeah. fun. And then even like it, it can be a little like bystander his back where it yeah. like pops off. Yeah, and you can pop him off. How sweet would that be? Then uh, a flag smasher can break it in half. <laughs> Sam gets battle fury <laughs> plus one stats to your next turn. <laughs> Just gets. They're gonna have to unbench battle fury for this set. Yeah. I feel like like between at the very least. Oh, and how how do we not mention um, Battlestar? Chad. Oh, yeah. Battlestar. Battlestar is awesome. When Battlestar um, gets KO'd. Yeah, when Battlestar gets KO'd from the characters named Captain America, real name John Watt, or whatever, get Battle Fury plus one stats to your next turn. Exploit it's like plus weakness. three damage. And that's, oh, exploit. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, like plus um, three damage, exploit weakness. Plus three plus damage, the, exploit weakness. Plus three object. speed in full but, uh, speed and then make a close attack. He's the chasing cell phone the footage down. special object. Oh, that's right. That, uh, can, yeah, yeah. Can record. John Walker's actions after he gets Battle Fury. Right. <laughs> Consequences for your actions. <laughs> and then they give him negative stats. How lose many cell phones? Who's holding Yeah, lose keywords. Keywords. <laughs> lose, loses the soldier keyword. Uh, no longer a member of the United States military. Loses all bonuses as well. Um, corp- <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess like the only other character we could even mention from the show is like Isaiah Bradley. He might get like a oh, yeah. 10, 20 point by like kind of like a, little, a healthy figure. Um, maybe like a thirty point. He'd have super strength, but I mean, he's not fighting. He's not as doing much anything. As I, like, we never didn't see him for what prime. they did that, with that character. I like that, that it was at least they at least like brought him into the MCU. So potentially, yeah. if they ever do like a throwback, like seventies, like sixties, seventies, whatever, like time is period he kind in of movie, Korea or Vietnam? Was he Vietnam? I want to say it was Vietnam. So it would have been okay. like it would have been yeah, sixties. Like yeah. I, I don't know. Um. 
what time period because it, it would probably listen to us fail american history <laughs> no i'm just saying like it, the, the time period wouldn't necessarily have to be when the war's happening it could be uh like when oh, he's sure. back from the war when he has sure. to like deal with like the fallout and stuff because probably poor taste if they put what's supposed to be like a american hero in like either of those wars to be honest like uh i don't know how yeah. well they could do that well retroactively but yeah because I mean, the, the cool part of his story, not really the cool part, the interesting part of his story is that like he was, uh, like, he essentially the soldier. tortured cool and, well, yeah, that too. But I, oh. I'm talking like, oh, the his... torture is the cool part. That's what you think is the cool part for, for his story. So <laughs> I mean, the part of his story that's like unique because who oh, cares okay. that there he you... saw Bucky? Um, hey. <laughs> a lot of people saw Bucky. I guess he's like the one that saw him and lived or whatever. Uh, exactly. Come on. But no, like, so like his story, the part that like makes it dramatic that people would actually want to see is like, uh, the, like the downfall and like him having to like essentially like live life on the run or whatever afterwards. Oh, right. And just being angry about that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm like pining to watch the torture of one you know well it wouldn't be like dude. five episodes of it okay they're not gonna put like, us through wandavision again dude, man five ooh, episodes of torture ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> people are like really getting our hot takes for these shows uh, this episode. it's pretty no. funny um we're gonna lose some listeners i don't That's think funny. i can think of anything else for okay for falcon winter soldier yeah falcon winter soldier maybe like if there's a chase Sam and then they make a chase Bucky and if they're both on the map at the same time you get a bystander that's like a boat that works or something you can pass oh it my two, gosh. so it's just oh a boat that like, carries them off into the sunset that's yeah <laughs> shut up <laughs> you and the boat I, the boat I'm gonna be honest with you I, I honestly was mad about the whole boat side quest like thing that was happening because I was just like who cares who actually cares about this boat um, and they had to make it this whole big thing. And I'm just like, gosh, I do not. I so don't. You cannot pay me to care. Any, Anyways. Uh, anyways. Uh, I think what you said kind of in the end there. If we got an actual Falcon Winter Soldier figure. If they did some form of a duo figure again. I would be very happy with a Falcon Winter Soldier figure. Or a Captain America Winter Soldier figure. Or a, or a Captain America Battlestar figure. I would love it if they brought back duos. And a WandaVision figure, you know what I mean? Like, if they brought back duos just for the set. Oh, Simeon, if the chases are duo figures. Hey. The that would chases actually, are duo figures. That actually makes a sense. There's a lot of duo right? going on. Right? So we get we get a Captain Carter Hydra Stomper. We get a WandaVision. We get a Falcon Winter Soldier. We get a Captain America Battlestar. We get a Sylvie Loki. Other stuff. Plenty of other stuff. Ah. Oh. See now, now I'm so excited for this, and this is probably this is probably absolutely not, not happening. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely not going to happen. Uh, but I am, I am hundred percent here for it. Uh, let's move on to, I guess, Loki, shall we? Before we get too carried away. Yeah. Before I get too so, carried away. So Loki's got a ton of options because um, you can make like generic variant Loki. You can do literally all the Lokis that were shown. Um, you can do generic timekeepers or the TVA agents or whatever you want to call them, the hunters. Uh, yeah. Then of course there's Loki, there's Sylvie, there's the the variants that actually like had screen time. Uh, so like the crocodile Loki would be the one that I want the most, even though I don't know what it would do, but I think it'd be really cool. Uh, second to that would be classic Loki, which I don't even know how you would describe his power on hero clicks like <laughs> better than everybody else like double power know. action flood the map with barrier tokens or something like just equally ri ridiculous because it's not really barrier it's a it's an it's, illusion so it's, it's an like, illusion yeah give everybody like every friendly character within like six squares plus one to shape change if they can't already use shape change oh just like they dude, just give them like this crazy way to like change the map like double power action all elevated terrain is now blocking terrain, or just something weird. Like all hindering terrain is now blocking terrain. Like let them so actually like, the like next, mess with like the map. Yeah. So basically. it'd be double power action. Well, they don't do double power action, but something similar to like that kind of thing, or like a specific click where he gets this power. Um, yeah, 
and yeah, you put like a timer token or you put like some sort of token on his card. Or he's got a special click where you, he's got like a really low defense. So you like switch him to that click, and while he's on that one, the map stays that way, but he's got a low defense, so he's easy to like KO take out at that point. I don't know. There's ways they could do it. Um, I just hope it's not like barrier. Barrier, shape change, yeah, barrier. That, would, that would really suck. Barrier shape change, like no, he doesn't even get barrier. Impervious uh, yeah. super senses. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's true. No, uh, don't do this. Don't do me like that. And then, all right. Yeah, I already saw right. a thread where people were saying Kang. They really want like Kang, and I'm like, what did he do though? He did what? a monologue. He gets a he gets an apple light object. Yeah. Like what do you like? What do you want Kang to do? Yeah. Come on. The the biggest event that Kang does in the series is die. Is die. Yeah. And so before it's that, nice. it's just it's just talk. Um, just, I don't know how they would. Does like talking. I don't know how they would uh, represent Aleph. Like without it being a two by two, so I I assume we just don't get one unless it's like Kang spawns Alif or something. What Maybe. what is Alif? You said this last episode or la- what what Alif? What are you talking about? What is, is that? that not is the that smoke the smoke monster? Oh, that's what this is. That what the smoke is called? I, I thought that's what yet. it was called. I just called it the big stupid fart cloud that made no sense. That had a stupid Wait, weakness specifically to one character to totally cater to that one character's ability that no other character could potentially be the <laughs> smoke cloud. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, okay, I don't think okay. it is Alif. Alif are the, those are the gar- like the gardeners that, uh, those were in the Avengers Assemble set. That's how old those guys are. Uh, oh wow! What is that smoke monster name? Smoke monster, dude. They call smoke him something monster, though. Loki. They call him something. Eliath. Okay. Eliath. You're I was right. Some random stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know how you'd represent his power. Because he moves through things and they just die. So, I mean, we have characters like Captain Marvel that can move through somebody and deal one pen. But this would be, to accurately represent it, this would be like equivalent of like five to six penetrating damage or something. Yeah. Completely I can things. I can live without this guy. I He was dumb. Everything about this yeah. thing was, was weird. <laughs> yeah, very plot um, heavy kind of stuff. Very, um, you know, very be cool plot though, heavy. Uh, some of the because of like some of the variant stuff, there is like Frog Thor makes an appearance. Um, That's true. Some of the what if stuff, I think, even is like shown. Um, there's the like the yellow jacket helmet and some other stuff like that. So there's like some cool stuff that could be pulled from Loki. I don't know, other than. The TVA and then like the Nowhere Land or wherever they get sent at the very end. Um, oh yeah, like the random planets don't really have anything that would matter to me. Like no. there's a fight scene on the train, but like do not you get know what that planet was called and do not care. We get a Sif who is the same on every click, and she just nut shots. She's like free <laughs> action move, move, make a close Jeez. attack. Negative one stats on that character. That's next uh, to she, she. It's the first character to have stun that outside Mobius WWE. That that? Mobius sends him there. Yeah, like, Mobius. Mobius, Mobius sends is like a title character and has Bill. like the minus six title ability. Ah, oh, beautiful. Is you like lock them in this like little yes. like, box where they yes. just get like slowly precision striked to death. Ah. <laughs> uh. We should be in charge of making this set. We're doing a great job. Dude, this we is should. pretty amazing. These are, all these figures are fire so far. <laughs> it's really they are good so, so far. Good. I'm not going to lie. The theme is good. <laughs> uh, we're killing it in the Loki sub theme of the set. It's so great. Um, yeah, I mean, everything you said is kind of just like stuff I want. You know, obviously, we got to get a Mobius. You said like the generic time folks. Do you think we get like maybe a Miss Minutes? Someone pops out a Miss Minutes bystander, probably. I mean, if, if not somebody. Um... If like one of the objects is, like, I wouldn't. The, oh, the she's an object. Thing, their their little like PDA device or whatever. Oh sure. Um, that could spit out like a bystander, because similar to like the illusion generator that Mysterio like can spit out one of his things. That's right. Know. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Like he shape changes, succeeds. He gets the little little Mysterio robot deal. Yeah. Okay. I could see that, but it spits out a little missed minutes. Yeah. Are you recording? Are you real? Kind of both. That could be that could be funny. 
It'd be funny. Uh, I Sarah, definitely wouldn't want it to be it. I had a mini panic attack and had to check to make sure that I was recording. Oh, are, yeah, no. I, you're <laughs> I was like, wait, what? You are recording this podcast. <laughs> Let's, let's get no mistake. If if you were not recording this podcast, we would. I would just. Ah, man. I love you, Simeon. But I, I know you're doing it. it. I know you're doing it. But I would. <laughs> I would. I would be pretty po'd. Anyways, uh, what if? Uh, I mentioned Captain Carter. Mentioned the Hydra Stomper. Uh, obviously, I think T'Challa, Star Lord. I think anything that was because we have to think about when this set is being made. It was probably getting designed earlier this year, so they they might not have even known about certain characters. I I'm gonna assume they did though, because of how many figures are being made. So I'm gonna say they might not know all of What If or all of Loki, but I'm gonna assume they definitely understood WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier maybe when they were making the set. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully, that's that's really giving them. Uh, that's really saying that the set they're well, whipping up it pretty quickly. I think you know? the most important thing about this set is less. Less necessarily what's in it, and more of like what kind of door does this open? This means if they if they do this set once, they can revisit it and fill out whatever they didn't get the first time. Which means like maybe they weren't clued into all the what if stuff, but they can probably do that on like a second go through pretty easily. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, you have to think this is also the first time they've ever done a movies like. Traditionally, I guess it is a TV show set. So they've already done a TV show Star Trek set. But it's the first time they've ever done like an MCU properties set as mixing all of the properties together. And then even past that, putting them in a booster. I guess they've mixed uh, the first three movies together when they did uh, the Avengers movie set. They had characters from Thor and Iron Man 2 and all that stuff. But anyways, this is the first time they're putting them in a booster brick. We've never had an MCU movie set in a booster brick before. So this really gets me super hopeful. I really, because MCU right now, they're still pushing action figures and Funko and Lego sets of the quote unquote like legacy like movies, the 20, the 10, 15 years, whatever of these Marvel movies, right? And they're pushing the whole Infinity Saga and they're just re- remaking action figures from the Infinity Saga. Like we just got a Surtur action figure recently from a movie that's yikes, four years old. Thor Ragnarok is four years old. Goodness gracious. Yeah, uh, but we got a Surtur. Sort of, I feel super old. I got a Surtur figure, so I would love to see a Infinity Saga Wiz Kids Hero Click set that is, you know, Infinity War End Game, you know, and then movies we never got sets for Spider Man, Black Panther, right? It's crazy to think of, but this might be the first set we get a quote unquote Tom Holland Spider Man, and it might be like Zombie Hunter Spider Man with yeah. like the cape, you know, like that would be weird. Like, finally, like he's been around since Civil War, and this is just the first time we ever get Spider-Man, you know? I mean, happy, obviously, to get it, um, but still, it's crazy. So, yeah, there's there's a lot this set can do, but, and, you know, there's still, What If is obviously still going on, but What If is definitely the one where you knew the least, just the least about, in general, you know? Like, well, so, they, I besides mean, they did what they showed... A lot of it, like, like recorded, or... Like a lot of the voice acting done, yes, at least for a, two years for a ago long or so. Time. Like, yeah. so it's possible that they had some of the plot knowledge, but again, how much of that does uh, Marvel share with Wiz Kids? We don't right. know. Judging from past sets, if like that's not anything to go by, they don't share a lot because usually Wiz Kids does not get like flavor text like super on par with what actually happens in movies and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, like all like the the Winter Soldier movies, the prime example of it with characters that should have had the Hydra keyword not having the Hydra keyword and like all that stuff. You were like, oh wow, this is very uh, very much. They just sort of knew what actors were going to be in the movie. So I I do hope this time maybe it's a little different. But even if it isn't, if we just assume going off what toy companies are making, then Wiz Kids knows about you know whatever Hydra Stomper, Captain Carter. They know about Zombie Spider Man. They know apparently about there's going to be an episode where Gamora is Thanos. There's going to be an episode where Vision succeeds, or not Vision, excuse me, Ultron succeeds because, you know, Vision was going to be his original body. So, like, there's going to be an episode like that. Um, There's also apparently going to be a few, like, an episode where Iron Man is in Sakaar and he builds, like, a Sakaaran Hulk buster to beat Hulk. Like, if if Iron Man went to Sakaar instead of Thor or, like, something weird like that. It's like... There are episodes that we haven't seen yet, but I've seen action figures or Legos or whatever for 
obviously I hope we get a really cool Watcher figure. Um, a evil Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, would be really cool as well. You know, oh, they would do that one really. Um, but that could be fun. Yeah, uh, giant Frost Giant Loki, that would be cool. You know, yeah. I haven't seen but, yeah. any of What If, so you haven't seen any of it, Simi? No. Any of it? Yeah, really? I have ze- so I have zero problems with spoilers. I always think if you're a good storyteller that it's the the actual story and not the like the twist or like the the big whatever reveal that like right. matters. It's like the actual sure. story, it's the dialogue that I care about. So I never care about spoilers, but yeah, I uh since I've been like moving and like shifting stuff around, um my PS3 has become my streaming device and uh Let's just say PS3 was not designed with the intention to stream Disney+. Plus. Uh, it can't even do Hulu coming, I think, December. They're going to take Hulu off of PS3 wow. Network. So, yeah, it's slowly being phased out, and I'll only have, like, Netflix before I eventually cave and buy, like, a Roku or something. But, Ooh, who yeah, so I, I have not been keeping up. console that is 15 <laughs> years old. <laughs> Hey, it's uh, technically my newest console. How sad is that? Wow. Uh, that's not true. Uh, what's newer than f- my PS3 is my throwback Super Nintendo. Oh, gosh. Like you're right. Mini. My Super that's Nintendo funny. Mini is technically newer. That is hilarious. But it's true, though. That is newer. Oh, my gosh, bro. But no, uh, to get back on track, I think it would be hilarious if... WizKids got a second chance at What If and actually did it right this time. So we know that like yeah. when they did What If, the 15th anniversary What If in Elseworlds, they were trying to revamp the RAV system, and they were kind of seeing how sales would work with that if people would actually like it. And of course, to much chagrin, like nobody wanted that. Nobody wanted three of the same sculpt, common, uncommon, and rare. It makes pretty much makes like the whole set kind of like just the super rares and chases which is what what if and elseworlds both felt like uh like name one good figure that wasn't okay green oracle was a good rare um but anyhow it'd be cool if they get a second chance at what if and they like really lean into it and pull from i mean this is like the one subcategory where if they didn't pull just from Disney Plus, I'd be okay with them reaching out to like comic storylines. Otherwise, well, I do not be want honest, any sub themes that like are in, not MCU. Yeah, yeah. In in like that same scope, you know, like let's say all the chases were maybe what if, and that's why we got to see what was her name, like Crusader. That was that was the rogue Captain America girl, right? That Whiskey's posted a little while ago. So let's say like maybe that's like the chase theme or whatever for, for uh, Disney plus ones is what if characters I'd be okay with that. But I, you know, if we're going to do a Disney plus set, I would personally be like, let's just go all in. Let's do it once. Let's do it right. Let's not have a sub theme be anything comic book, anything, whatever. Let's just totally explore as much as we can with these characters. Cause I don't know when we'll ever get them again. You know, I'm like, obviously some comic book characters, we never know when we're going to get them again, but still like, I feel like they have a less chance of being made any any Disney Plus stuff than this like one time. Like this is like their chance to make them, and this is probably all we'll ever get because who knows? Really, yeah. comic book stuff, the pull random comic book stuff all the time, you know. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, and they they absolutely should just like abs- like just lean directly into Disney Plus and not do any sub themes. It should be one hundred percent pulled from Disney Plus. I don't want any X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga kind of stuff where it's like, oh, there's plenty of other options for Dark Phoenix Saga, but uh, here's Vange Whedon. Yeah. Here's, like, yeah. Legion and, like, you know, like, other people who, like, did not make appearances in X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga. I can't even remember, like, what all appeared. There's, there. like, you know, the Red Onslaught guy. Yeah, Red um, Onslaught. I think that Ashton. was mostly two-by-twos. Yeah, there's... Uh, yeah. Well, the at the single base Bastion definitely wasn't in the um, no, definitely not animated series. So yeah, there there are several things that could have been cut and made room for plenty of other stuff. Mostly upset yeah. I did not get my title character Wolverine pining over like the photo in bed kind of figure that I really um, wanted. But 
That's what we really needed. I guess it right is there. what it is. All right, and if you're listening and you skipped ahead to get rid of all those nasty spoilers we were dropping on you, now is finally a safe time to continue what is left of the episode. Although, it's probably not much. Probably not worth it. But go ahead. Feel free. I'll allow it. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. That is, uh, is going to be the Disney Plus set. I, I hope it's real. And if it is, then between that and Empire, we're going to just really start off the 2022 year in et and then keep it going strong if it's february release date of just being being financially insecure with how many hero cooks <laughs> i'm gonna buy that is okay because i want yeah. it i want it bad <laughs> i want it so Man, bad it's starting off um, like yeah the end of the year end of the year is strong me, like, with empire empire i guess war of the realms is now slated for 2022 but um yeah, Empire is ending strong. War of the Realms probably starting fairly strong. I don't know. I think I think it's going to be hard to top Empire, but I'm just I'm trying to overhype myself so that my <laughs> when I'm eventual disappointment disappointed, I <laughs> yes. am just like absolutely crushed oh. and I just rage about it. Yeah. Very very sad. Very sad. Uh but all right. Let's uh let's go ahead. You know, guys, I think this is a great time where I tell you to freaking rate the podcast. If you like the show, leave a review. It really helps out. It's totally free to do that. Leave a review. It makes it pop up in more people's feeds when they look up Hero Clicks. It'll be the first one they see, you know. Obviously, we're going to want you to rate it five stars, but I want you to rate it honestly. Rate what you think the show is. I think Simi does an awesome job editing. I think we try to make a fun show every week. I think we got a five star show. What can I say? Um, but if you don't, want to do anything that's free and you want to give us money well hey howdy hey we'll reward you for that so if you join us on patreon you can support the show for as little as one dollar a month you get one entry into our monthly giveaway this month we're freaking giving away all the convention exclusives except for master molds i didn't freaking buy any master molds so we got a wonder woman jumpa ultimate warrior cosmic ghost rider thanos uh all those con exclusives are going to be up on patreon this month you only have a few days left to jump up because october 1st ladies and gentlemen october fest that's it that's your cutoff date all right so join the patreon every dollar you donate is an entry into the monthly giveaway if you want to get more entries into the giveaway after you join patreon you can go in our discord and we will play bad samaritan which if you are unfamiliar with that that is our hero clicks guessing game we play that pretty much Every Sunday when it works out for everybody and whoever has the highest rating in their Bad Samaritan gets the most right over the course of a month, the next or for, for that month, they will get a plus 15 entries into the giveaway. So by playing a fun free game where it's, you know, get a chat up with Simi and I, hang out, you know, shoot the breeze, do whatever, have an all around good time, you'll get more entries into the giveaway. Plus, if you support us on Patreon, you can get snazzy shirts like our Smexy Ram Chan shirt. Or uh, just whatever, Dialogue for Heroes podcast shirts. We're going to try to work on some like Natter Days or for the boys, billion click shirts, maybe some uh, uh, some non copyright infringing alcoholic beverages uh, shirts. I don't know. I, if you guys have ideas for t shirt designs, let us know. We'll get an artist on them, crack them out. Uh, we still have our That's the Way Hero Click Should Be shirt. Like if people want that shirt, I do have that uh, little design there. The Hero Clicks Champion is also a shirt. You get stickers. And maybe our best thing is like tokens on the Patreon. People love the tokens. I like designing them. I like that Luke super helps out making the tokens. So we got bystanders. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need Red Sun Lex Luthor bystanders, hey, howdy, hey, Simi and I got you covered. If you need Ares bystanders, we got you covered. We're going to try to do some more bystanders uh, in the future. We also just have a lot of tokens that are basically to represent stuff, right? So whenever it says give this character a blank token, we make tokens like that. So the penance... Ghost Rider gives out penance tokens. Thanos gives out punishment tokens. We made those as tokens. There's cool little visual representations. Have a sweet picture of Thanos. Have a cool picture of Ghost Rider on it. We make tokens like that. So check out our Patreon, guys. We'd really appreciate that. See, I mean, you can do the cool stuff Inc. Read now. We're not gonna. We're gonna do questions separately. This is this is the end of the show. Oh, I didn't. Uh, oh, I didn't we're, make that we're sound. We, we're doing questions separately. Uh... I was just reminiscing about how sad I'm not going to be able to do my end of, like, the readout Shadow the Hedgehog bit because, like, oh, man. That, that I was, forgot about that. I'm that not going to so lie. Um, that it was, it was really funny, and now it's just not going to be the There was a lot of edge. 
yeah. lot of edge. Uh, lot how of edge. Do we even, Just like how Shadow, do we... the best of the hedgehogs, because he's so dark. He has so many emotions. He's the most human of all the hedgehogs, but also the most dangerous. He's oh, we still favorite. got Shadow, still got here anyways. We still. And if you like Shadow the Hedgehog, and I don't know, maybe Hero Clicks. And if you can't think of a segue, but really want one, well, you know what? Cool Stuff Inc. doesn't sell segues, but they do sell cool stuff, and they keep it in stock every day, including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So you should check them out at CoolStuffInc.com, and don't forget to use code DIAL5 to save 5%. And if you hit that $100 mark, you get free shipping. So check them out, CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah, I guess that's what we're going to go with, because that, I mean, that was the best take by default. But, uh, I mean, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.